what's up? So I got some mail today. Ordered some stuff from Jantz Supply, knifemaking.com. You guys don't know who that is, go check them out. They got some cool shit. They got giraffe bone, all sorts of stuff for making knives. So I'm gonna open these up and see what I got. I mean, I know what it is, but you don't know what it is, right? So I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think I have everything to go ahead and start this tonight. So we're gonna see. No, we don't need that. Hang up the old letter opener. <sighs> paper, paper, fucking paper, Jesus. All right, there it is. <sighs> Get out of here. That is Jantz Welding Supply 1084 Powdered Steel. If you know anything about knife making, you know what I'm going to do with this. Okay? So I'll show you that in just a second. I'll sit that over there. Not sponsored. I don't care. Um, I just like the way it tastes. Cool. Next one. Uh, this one's just from Amazon. Super cheap to buy stuff from Amazon, even though I'm not supporting local businesses. But uh, I ordered from Jantz because they're in Davis, Oklahoma, and I live in Edmond, Oklahoma. It's nice. I order it. I normally get it the next day. It's pretty good. I like having that little knife, man. It's good stuff. It's corona pill bags. Oh, that one looks like that's got a... Damn, man. Box in a box. It's like a Russian nesting doll just trying to get the shit that I ordered here. It's kind of ridiculous. If I can get into this stupid box. Old banana knife. There we go. Man, it's kind of tiring. Some more Corona bag in here. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> They're waiting on this too. That's pretty cool. I like this stuff. This here, ferric chloride. It's what I use to bring out the pattern in my Damascus. Do a 50 50 mix between that and distilled water. It does pretty sweet. Brings out the pattern real good. Mix it up like that. So, this 1084, right? Yeah, that's what I'm 1084 high carbon steel. I think I got some, yep, yep, I got a few in here. This is my junk box back here, have all sorts of stuff in. That there, bandsaw blade. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chop him up, little pieces, stick it inside what's right behind you here. Sorry about that. I got this little tube here, a little one inch by one inch square tube. Chop him up into little pieces. Fill it up with powder, stick it in the forge, melt it all together. Give me a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to clean these up. All right. I'm back. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. <clears throat> what I like about these bandsaws, this came off of a wood bandsaw, or actually it was used to cut cardboard and stuff at work. Um, what I like about them is you make your canister whatever size or length you want. Well, then you make sure that these will fit in there without cutting. Is it fucking Monday? Jesus Christ. Anyway, you make sure that when your bandsaw goes in there, it doesn't stick out the top like that, right? Because you got to put a cap on either end, and if it sticks out, you obviously are not going to be able to get a seal. So, Find the right size, which is this here. Lay it up there. And what's cool about the bandsaws, see the two different ones there? What's cool about them is that you can start the bend, right? Just bend it around your finger. Get that bend started in there. You know right where to go. And then careful, this one's dull. I mean, but it'll still cut you. You just bend it around your finger a little bit until you get about like that. And then you just squeeze it and it pops. That's it, right? Now, it's the right size. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. 
but I figure this is kind of boring to watch sometimes, especially a guy just sitting here in his garage doing a bunch of dumb shit. I enjoy it, but shit, you might not. So I'm gonna tell you a story. My son is 12. Not gonna say his name because kids at school would <laughs> they'd murder him. So he calls me the other day and now that uh, Ducks Unlimited raffle thing, where actually I won a 22. It's pretty sweet. But uh, he calls me the other day. My wife says, Dad, what is a 69? It's a hell of a question to answer, right? So I've adopted the parenting style of truth, really. So I proceed to explain to him exactly what a 69 is. I'm not going to explain it here. If you don't know, you're probably too young to be watching me anyway. But if you do know, after I get done with the explanation, he looks at me, or of course we were on FaceTime, looks at me and goes, how, how does that happen one at the same time as the other? And I just looked at him and made my buddy hold the phone. So I used both my hands to look at him and said, son, it's because they were inverted. <laughs> if you get the Top Gun reference, Tom Cruise, I appreciate you. But it was the funniest shit I could think of at the time. Probably not very educational, but you are inverted when you're doing it, all right? So I think I've got probably enough of these that... I can go ahead and start making this canister. You know, I need that piece I just threw in the discard pile. All right. What I'm gonna do is, I need to cut me a little, make a couple of caps, so I can put a cap on there, weld it over. So I need to break out the welder, cut a couple of caps, and uh, get going on that. I'll be right back. All right, so I got me a couple little pieces cut up and made up. Now the bottom side doesn't really matter all that much. You can just weld it on like you're putting a little cap on. But on the top side, you want a little piece that fits perfect in there because what you're gonna wanna do is put it inside that tube or canister and press it down and get it fitting in there real tight and get rid of all the air that's in there. Air is bad in a canister. Fucking bad, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this welder on and I'm gonna weld this up real quick. And then we'll get to filling her up. Always, always, always safety first. Got some filler rod. Now what I have is a TIG. Um, so I TIG weld all of my stuff. Um, MIG welders, rod welders, doesn't matter. Um, whatever melts metal together, uh, doesn't matter. Watch your eyes. Now, when I tell you that a grinder makes me the welder that I am, this is what I mean. Not great at regular welding. You can see it. That looks like garbage. It's really thin shit too. Um, kind of hard for me to weld at it. I'm not real great at it. So I'll show you what it looks like after I hit it with a grinder. There you go. Now, the only reason I hit it with a grinder, again, this doesn't have to be pretty, but I hit it with a grinder so I can see the seams. I wanna know that it's gonna hold pressure and water and molten metal. Um, so I'm gonna put it in some water or fill it up with some water, make sure it's gonna hold water. All right, after a little re-weld on a little pinhole I found, uh, it's holding water. Got water in there right now and uh, it's not leaking. So I think I'm ready to show you a trick. If you're paying attention or you've seen this kind of thing before, you know what this is for. Now, a lot of people say you're not supposed to use that. 
I like it. <clears throat> if you have the time to put that in there and let it completely, completely dry. I mean like completely dry. Don't put shit in there when it's still wet. Coat the entire inside of it, let it dry, and then start stacking your material in there. Put your 1084 powder, which is what I got, and bandsaw blades. Put that stuff in there after it dries. What that does is it gives it a nice film between the canister material and the material you put in there. So you're effectively creating a delamination. That way you can just, after you beat it and forge weld it all together, the billet should, in theory, which I've done it a couple of times and it works really well, the billet will just slide out of there when you cut it open. Um, now, if you don't have the time, um, you're doing it for some sort of competition or you just wanna see how fast you can do it, um, don't use anything, right? Clean the inside of it out, throw your stuff in there. You're gonna grind off that thin, uh, mild steel canister anyway. Um, so the hard metal, hard material, high carbon steel is gonna be out on the knife edge anyway. So I think I'm gonna start doing that. Um, but right now I'm gonna go eat dinner. I'm fucking hungry. So I'm gonna finish this up tomorrow. Um, you don't have to wait for a second video though. I'm just gonna finish it tomorrow. All right, so it's tomorrow, and uh, I was thinking about it last night, about this canister. You see how thin it is. I don't like it, and I don't know that I can trust the welds on that, um, probably because, you know, I'm just not a real great welder. So I made another one that is same size um, in pretty much every way except for the thickness, right? So there's a lot more material there that I can, I don't want that no more. There's a lot more material there that I can weld to, right? Um, so I can guarantee and I can put a little bit more faith that those welds aren't going to break when I go to beating the hell out of it when it's red hot. So uh, I'm going to do a little prep work, probably speed it up because it's kind of boring. I overdo the prep work just because I don't like it when things fail. Um, now when you do fail, because it always happens, happens to everybody, um, you learn something from it. And what I've learned is the more time you put into prep work and preparing your metal um, to go into the canister, the better off you are. So uh, I always take a little bit extra time because I don't have a power hammer, I don't have a press, I don't have anything. I do everything with a hammer and an anvil. So it's a lot of swinging of the hammer to fail. So I try to do anything that I can to mitigate that. So watch this. Uh, I'm going to speed it up because it's boring, but uh, I'm going to wash these off with some acetone. I'm going to clean the inside of that, and then I'm going to put the light out in there and get that drying. Okay. All right, so you can see all the way in there, that is completely coated on the inside, right? So we're gonna let that dry completely. Remember, you gotta let it dry completely or it'll stick to you like a bad girlfriend that doesn't trust you. <laughs> so <clears throat> remember I was talking about the little caps that fit down on the inside of these? Use this other one. I made a second one just because I like doing it. So um, this little cap, I went ahead and put the working stick on it. A lot of people don't do this. Um, this is the first time I've actually put the welding or the working stick on it before I welded the cap in. So the whole reason I'm doing this is one, it'll help me um, get a good fit and press down on it to get it in there um, to take up any of that negative space. But also, um, I don't have to weld it later. I can just do it now. So um, 
I'll go ahead and coat the inside of that as well um, before we'll stick that in there and uh, use that to press it down, jam it in there, weld it up. Um, but we're gonna let that dry and we've got the bandsaw blades curing up, got my 1084 powder, so now we wait. All right, so it's been sitting there a little more than an hour. I just wanted to make sure it was good and dry. You can see it completely coated in there and you can stick your finger in there, nothing comes out. So good and dry. Now we can put a little bit of powder in the bottoms, what I like to do. That way when I stack my bandsaw blades in there, it kind of gives it a base to set in. So remember if you guys are looking for some powder at uh, Jant Supply out of Davis, Oklahoma. They're, uh, they're pretty good. Um, I just like them. They don't give me any kickbacks, but they're just a good company. They got good prices and they get you your stuff when you order it. Here we go again. It's working out great. Damn it. All right, so I like to take a little spoon instead of pouring it. You can be a little, a little more accurate with it. Let's see if I can get up here. I mean, it's a pretty fine powder. I don't like to waste it because it's not super cheap. Throw some in there. A couple of scoops. All right, get you a good base going in there. And what I'm gonna do with the bandsaw is I'm gonna alternate the teeth. So I'm gonna set one that way and one that way. And if I'm lucky, which I doubt you're really going to be able to tell, but you might be able to see some sort of teeth um, in the in the blade when I'm done with it. So maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. You want to pack it real tight. Try to get as much material in there as you can. What I'm doing is shaking it up and down to get that uh, powder on the bottom to loosen up so I can get the blade all the way down in there. But uh, you don't really want to rely on, you know, all the powder being the main part of the blade, even though it is 1084 and it'll harden up pretty good. I want to get as many of these bandsaws in there as I can which I should be able to get all of them in there. Now be careful when you're stuffing them in there, it'll still cut you. If you're using bandsaws, you can lose little drops of 1095 or whatever you got laying around. I like to call this knife soup. Throw your ingredients in there, heat it up, mix it up, and then pull it out. One last one, come on now. All right, cool. All right, you can see them in there. They're all stuffed in there pretty good. I'm gonna fill that up. You know what? Try to stick one more in there. Something I didn't explain. When you snap these, they leave that little curl on the end. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I like to straighten them out normally. Um, this one, I just don't care. I'm gonna fill it up, so. <clears throat> all right, now, when I go to put 
the rest of the powder in here, um, you'll see me tapping it with a little hammer. And all that is is to get it vibrating and get that powder to sink into all those little negative spaces. And I don't use a real big hammer because you don't have to smack the shit out of it. Just use a little bitty one, tap away. And when you're doing this, you want to fill it up to the top to where you can't see the bandsaw blades. You can see the top of that there full up. And as I start wrapping on it, it starts going down. Rotate it, get it from all different sides. Make sure you get that powder all the way down into those little bitty crevices. And when I started this round, I couldn't see the bandsaws at all. You saw how high it was. Now, it's sucked all the way. There's a lot of negative space in there. So you want to make sure you get it all the way down in there, pack it real good. Tap the corners, tap the flats, do a little bit of everything. Now, if you're Whiteout kind of starts flaking when you're beating on it because you've been stacking metal in there. Stuff starts coming off of it. It's not that big a deal. You ain't got to worry about it so much. A couple more scoops here. Remember, you don't necessarily want it, the powder flush with the top because that cap has got to go inside there. So you want to leave a little bit of room enough that you can push that cap down on top of that. All right, so that's full up, and you can see, can't see any of the bandsaw blade. It's all powder on the top, right? It'd be a good flat area for that to come in and that cap to set on. Squeeze it down real good. All right? So you take your cap, and square tube is never square. Um, I mean, it measures out right, but the insides of it, half of them are bent and they kind of bow in a little bit and it's a little imperfect. So when you make your cap, <coughs> sorry, your insert, um, it's probably only gonna fit in there one way really well. So you make, double check which way it goes in there. Turn it 180, see this one doesn't fit 180. So this one fits perfect like that. And then we'll just tap it down in there. Squeeze it in there real good. Pack that stuff in there. The good thing is when you're packing this stuff, 
there's going to be a little imperfection, a little gap uh, between the cap and the sidewall of your canister. So that'll let that air come out and it'll kind of fill it in with some 1095 powder and then you can fill that in with your welder. So that's sitting in there pretty good. You can see that uh, work stick's pretty crooked. Um, doesn't really matter. Doesn't have to be perfect. All you want is that press down on there real good. Okay, so now I'm gonna weld that up um, and then That'll be our canister ready to go in the forge. All right, I'll be right back. Well, got it all welded up. Um, I can trust those welds 100%. I know it's gonna hold and do what I need it to. Um, if you guys like what you see, um, you're learning something or you're laughing at some dumb redneck doing dumb shit in his garage on the internet, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell. That way you know when I post something. I got a pretty good uh, giveaway knife coming up. That thing's gonna be pretty sweet. Um, I want you guys to stay in the know and not miss anything. But I appreciate you guys' time watching me and whatnot. Uh, if you didn't like something, put it in the comments. Let me know how I can improve. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to make something. Leave a comment. Um, anyway, I'm going to light the fire up and get this in there. And you guys can see that on the next episode. Uh, but for now, I'm going to make like a feed of shawl. I'm going to head out.